James Lynch here for MMA News, joined by Jake Hager, who's going to be fighting this Thursday at Bellator 250. Jake, how's it going, man? Look at that. It's going really well. Good to hear, man. Well, it's uh, great to see you back in action. Of course, part of this uh, new wave of Bellator. They're now Thursday nights on CBS Sports Network. You must have been thrilled to be a part of just their second card uh, with this new uh, you know, uh, partnership. Very exciting. Huge opportunity for me and my career. And it's like... There's something about Thursday nights that just has a good ring for sanction, sanctioned violence. No, it's it's awesome and a, and a big opportunity, like I said. And it's been a bit since we've seen you in the MMA cage. I know you've been busy with AEW. We'll get into that in a second. But prior to COVID-19, when were you looking to, to take your next Bellator fight? Would it, I imagine it would have been sooner than, than here we are in uh, November. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I was booked for the May 9th card. So it was one of the first Bellator cards to, to get scratched and everyone had to kind of scramble after that so our situation since then was like we're, we were trying to stay ready um but we had some um other responsibilities with aew which were great and it really opened up a different world for pro wrestling um for us it opened up a different world we had to find training partners we had to scramble to find uh certain facilities but it was cool because i felt like my team really came together and we found a silver silver lining and whatever we had we took it ran with it and found a way to get better yeah and it's uh, it's great to see you back like i mentioned uh when did you actually find out about this fight because i know bellator will tell their fighters well in advance and then the rest of us find out kind of later on uh, did you have a lot of notice for this one uh a little bit a little bit like originally uh we were thinking about doing it in july and then that was too soon and then september and then some stuff came up and so like officially knew about this guy uh this opponent in the fight about a month ago Oh, a good. Bit longer. Yeah. Okay. So decent, not not ideal. I'm sure you would have wanted eight weeks, but uh, you know, four four ain't too bad for for an upcoming fight here. Um, how has it been? Because uh, I know you know, like you said, you were expecting to fight again in Bellator, but then you got the wrestling going on as well. How were you able to balance you know MMA training and, and pro wrestling training as well? It's it's really I'm I'm able to do it because Bellator is a great company to work for, and because AEW is great to work for. They really understand um their talent is their asset and they and they really promote us and help us become assets to them by growing our brand and other ventures i think that's very popular now with mma and professional fighters it's definitely becoming more popular with professional wrestlers outside of uh, the wwe because they don't let anyone do anything um so it, it's been really cool i usually treat my days of filming at aew as my rest days and then i'm home and uh i'm, I'm practicing the remaining five days of the week uh just getting it in and trying to get better so never in a million years would i have thought that i could do both where i was pro wrestling on tv uh consistently and be an active professional mma fighter i thought i was gonna have to really transition to the other but this is awesome. I get to use both to help promote, and it's uh, really been uh, refreshing for me and a whole new set of goals to work for. And it looks like you're having fun out there. I mean, I was telling you off air, I'm a casual wrestling fan, but I have caught some of your stuff on AEW. Actually, I don't know if you know this, but in Canada, um, AEW actually airs on TSN, which is like our ESPN. So it's getting a nice primetime slot, which is uh, which is really great to see. It seems like you're having a lot of fun. How, what have been some of the biggest differences between AEW and WWE, in your opinion, in terms of what you've been able to do? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. I definitely consider this past year of pro wrestling my, my favorite year, my best year of my career uh just because it's been so rewarding i think chris jericho um stated it best with aew is like if you want to be successful how creative can you be because here they want you to succeed they give you the resources to grow and get a segment done instead of fighting you tooth and nail uh to be some character and so it's really cool to have that encouragement and i think that stops starts with you know the guys at top like i said jericho Tony Khan, the executive vice presidents, all good people. And they set a great example for the rest of us to follow. And I, I really think that shows in the product. People say I look like John Moxley. Do you agree? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Most people think that way, but I had to ask someone who actually works in the same company as him. So we verified that I am John Moxley's twin, uh, but obviously I cover MMA. I don't uh, wrestle for a living. Um, let's talk about your opponent here, uh, Brandon uh, Carlton, a uh, 2-0 record, similar experience to you. What do you know about him? How do you feel like you match up against him here? Yeah, I, I like the matchup. Uh, he's a he's a big, super heavyweight. Uh, I know he's going to be all 265 when he weighs in. So looking forward to having that challenge on my plate. Guy is nine or he's seven and zero. 
uh, amateur, and he's on a nine-fight win, win streak. So I'm expecting a very tough fight. Uh, I'm expecting both of us to go out there and throw some heavy hammers. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I'm going to expect my footwork to keep me out. I don't want to stand right in front of him. I want to be off to the side. Uh, I think he's going to try and get me up against the cage uh, and use that to his advantage. And so uh, we got to do a lot of footwork and uh, try to get his head down. And you talked about training camp there, guys really coming together. Who have you had a chance to work with for this fight? Uh, I got a couple like regulars in my training camp uh, that are, are really great. Um, <clears throat> a couple amateur boxers, uh, big guys that can really throw hands hard. Um, one guy is a is a Nigerian immigrant, Southpaw. He's six seven. Uh, he looks like Ali, but better. <laughs> and uh, I have to beg him to like take it easy on me he's got he's got me he's helped me so much uh on my feet and my hands um at, you know kind of out of range and definitely with the south southpaw uh aspect and then i got another guy uh terry toussaint big big heavyweight uh really lets me uh uh work on the inside with him he's so good on the inside and it's some area that i really need to improve on so uh, it, it, it's been fun, like working on my weaknesses and really having great guys around me that understand what I'm trying to do. And everybody gets better when that happens. And you're still working with Josh Rafferty, right? The, uh, ultimate fighter season one contestant. Yep. Josh Rafferty, uh, Rob Radford, Joey best, um, Josh Souter, uh, got a lot of really good guys, uh, coming in and helping me. Do you have to diet at all as a heavyweight? I don't. I'm, I'm the opposite. Uh, I usually walk around about 255. And so when I start doing two a days and when camp really starts uh, heating up, uh, I really have to fight to keep weight on, which is like anything. You have to be proactive in the sport. You have to be proactive in your recovery, proactive in your planning, and definitely have to be proactive in your nutrition. And as a country boy from Oklahoma, I definitely struggle on the nutrition. I can't just put gravy on, on everything. Yeah, you can wait till Thanksgiving for that one. Um, how do you see the fight playing out on Thursday? Obviously, you want the finish, but how do you envision just the style matchup? Uh, we're both uh, big, tall guys, so I'm going to see. I'm thinking a lot of jabs are going to be in there, um, and the person with the better footwork and the better gas tank will come out on top. I'm not. I'm not going to be in a hurry. Uh, I've been off for a year, but I've gotten better in that year, and so uh, I feel confident in my new abilities and. Uh, we're not going to let the fight come to us. <coughs> Excuse me. We're not going to let the fight come to us. We're definitely going to be taking it to him. But uh, we're going to be patient in there and uh, look for certain things that may surprise some people. Are you looking to fight again this year? Or are you kind of looking more towards 2021? Because you have a pretty bu busy schedule. Have you kind of thought about what's next after this without looking past Thursday night? Yeah, uh, I haven't really thought about it. I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, we're like, oh, maybe we can fight at the end of the year and we can go back to back because we're already in, in shape. Um, that would be a decision to make, you know, after Thursday night. Um, just focusing on that for, for now. Uh, but realistically, probably 2021 would be the next one. Okay. And, and do you like sort of the matchmaking right now where they're giving you guys with the same experience or are you kind of getting to the point where you're like, hey, I need to step up here? How, how are you? What are your thoughts on sort of the matchmaking so far? Yeah, I don't focus on it too much. Um, I I really like to rely on the team, and they they like to push me, and they think this is a good matchup. So I'm uh, just focused on my job. Have you seen this Dark Side of the Ring, uh, uh, you know, documentary series they've been doing? It's actually uh, done out of Canada, and your buddy Chris Jericho, uh, you know, has been a big part of it. Of course, of course, it's amazing. Yeah, you like it? Is there one episode that really stands out to you? Because all the episodes to me are great. The, the Chris Benoit one was really tough to watch, but I'm glad they went into detail and explained what happened because it's been kind of a taboo subject to touch over the years, and I'm glad they sort of you know let everyone know what actually happened. Yeah, I think it's important to shed light on the stuff. And you may think that you know a story, but that was almost 14 years ago, 12 years ago. So it's really good to go back. And then also with with Benoit like so much developments have been made in concussions and CTE and so it's good to just continue to shed light on that unhidden injury that we all have and it's hard to diagnose and it's just it I, that discussion is always good as long as you know you're civil with it um dark side of the ring is amazing uh, I really enjoyed um the Puerto Rico uh 
gosh, uh, the Brody, the Brody. Yes, episode. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that had Dutch Mantel on there uh, narrating. Uh, I really enjoyed Chris narrating uh, the Benoit uh, one. The Gino Hernandez one was also very in- interesting. Yeah, there's there's a lot of good ones. I actually PVR'd it, and every now and then I'll go back and uh, watch another one. And I know the new season's going to be coming up soon. Is there is there one area you'd like to see covered that maybe they haven't touched on yet? Uh, maybe a Jack Swagger one. They could uh, profile you. Maybe not a dark side of the ring, but at least kind of highlight what you've been up to. I think there's a lot of good stories coming out of pro wrestling right now. Uh, it's definitely fun to be a part of the industry, and we're growing at a, a great rate, and a lot of competition out there. So uh, maybe maybe the Monday Night Wars they could uh, do a behind the scene thing. Oh on, yeah, that'd be great. Perspective, you know, kind of what we're doing now. Yeah, that's excellent. And my last question, which AEW wrestler do you think would do very well in MMA in terms of like from an athletic standpoint or maybe even like a promo standpoint? Is there anyone that you think of on the roster and you're like, man, it would be cool to see them do MMA? I think John Moxley is a great AEW world champion. And I know after wrestling him for that championship for like 43 minutes in front of no audience in, in the Florida heat, uh, that man has what it takes to you know, go five rounds, go into the championship rounds and uh, still have heart and still have explosiveness. Uh, he trained just a little bit and uh, I think he's, I think he's a natural for it. Definitely has that. I don't care attitude and uh, I'm ready to fight. Jake, thanks so much for this, man. It was great catching up with you. Glad to see you back in action here. Uh, I'll give you the last word here. If you got any sponsors, social media, anything you want to plug, the floor is yours, sir. Hey guys, uh, if you have any trouble finding that at home piece of fitness equipment that isn't on the internet or you just don't even know about, you need to check out the Catabell by the Catalina Technique. It's seven weights in one, water filled kettlebell, doubled handled. You can't, you can take it anywhere, work out in the park, work out at home. Uh, I use it all the time for my training. It's great for strengthening, it's great for rehab. Uh, Catalina Technique dot com backslash catabell thank you with the c